Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is how to come down or how to get your feeling of balance or normalcy back after you've been in a relationship that has caused you anxiety and stress and perhaps sort of this hyper arousal addiction syndrome that tends to be a pattern in these relationships where the addiction is striving after some thrill, excitement, uncertainty that is part of a psychopathic relationship. That's how they conduct their bait and switch. They distract you from your focus and your own, you know, um, regulation within your own gut and sort of keying into what you know is right or wrong and then sort of letting your guard down in the midst of the development of trust which is really the foundation and bedrock when they lay down that foundation in the beginning where you can trust me you can trust me and then here comes all these idiosyncratic you know sort of unicorn like things that they do that seems to keep the relationship on a hyper aroused state. In, in other words, it's sort of you're romanced by the relationship. It has this very seductive um, quality to it. In other words, it can become very impractical, very irrational in the midst of while you're sort of in the seething or the height of the relationship. There's a hyper arousal. Um, uh, and oftentimes this is in a violate, you know, a violation while simultaneously trying to please you, you know, sort of pleasing you through violating your boundaries where a lot of people were unaware or hitherto unconscious of the fact that they needed to pay attention to this aspect of their being in the transitionary, you know, the transitions of the relationship. Meaning that when things started to kind of, you know, go into that, um, I would say that a kind of higher risk behavior that a psychopath is known to do or sort of taking you into new waters, new lands, new places. Um, and there's this hyper arousal. There is an addiction and there is a pattern that seeks to reattain that level, which becomes like a new plateau in the relationship. Meaning, you know, you're wanting more and more and more of that stimulation in that just, um, what is received as sort of being, you know, an overwhelmed but feeling, you know, committed but out of control to this individual or this situation or the setting. And one oftentimes feels that they sort of lose themselves, you know, in the relationship. Um, they lose focus, they lose sight, you know, they lose their sense of self. In other words, it just feels like it's left, like a poof, you know, it just sort of at one point it just bursts like a bubble. And it can be very disorienting when people are trying to come out and emerge and have a point of view, a focus, and have sort of a blueprint moving forward so that they have a forward vision again that is, you know, whole, has, is wholeness based. In other words, when the, when the psychopath hyper arouses you as a con woman or a con man or whatever the psychopath happens to be, and they've picked up on someone who's empathetic, caring, giving, um, you know, naive or carefree, you know, all these positive qualities that are like a playful child oftentimes are just sort of, you know, squeezed out of a target or supply that they are seeking to manipulate. And again, it's very much, you know, impersonal to them. If you can remember that their selection of you is nothing personal. You, you happen to fit like an algorithm of, what this what this predator type of individual was looking for remember the female psychopath and i think this was the question was coming from a gentleman so we're just going to keep with that but it can go either way anyway which way up or down sideways northeast zenith atlas whatever it can be through any spectrum in any culture it's a it's a situation that very innocent people find themselves um sort of wrapped up in but however, um, so as we're alluding to, alluding to, is this hyper arousal, you know, is they're kind of getting more and more control of you and they see that it has a corrosive or erosive effect on you, meaning 
They see you wearing yourself out. They see you panicking. They see you getting paranoid. They see you getting onto them. Or, you know, when you're starting to question them, when you go through the phases in the beginning, the foundation that is laid is, you know, you can trust me. Your secrets are safe with me. And you don't really see this coming because it just sort of is like, all of a sudden they're just in your space or in, you know, just like they, they've known you for forever. You know, they, they're just, they make themselves very comfortable with you. Um, and then, you know, there's in the bedrock, you know, the laying the foundation, the initial phase, the love bombing phase, usually, you know, they'll present some sort of information or some sort of document or a picture that is showing you that they are just as human or sensitive or in a fragile space or don't, you know, as you are. So there's a mimic like quality that they will, you know, engage in um, to kind of get you close. And there's a, a trusting, you know, very, very soon. And then there's a, a pattern or cycle where people then want to feed that trust more and more. And so they're putting more trust into that individual. They don't realize it. They think it's a we, us situation, but it's really becomes, they don't realize, you know, people don't realize in the beginning that they become very narrow minded. And rather than having the big picture, you know, they're very focused on the here and now, like just getting to the next stage of the relationship in the love bombing. And so then it will escalate to a hyper arousal state where they'll violate your boundaries, which are, should be very clear and intact. And that if anyone else did that, you'd whack, you'd say something, you'd put your foot down, you'd say no way, you know, but you are in this sort of doped up state when you're in the hyper aroused state by a psychopath because they've really sort of just distorted your perception. It's a very difficult, you know, situation, but you can see it. It was that it only belongs to that period of time. You will emerge. It will dissipate. You'll be you know, um, more aware of your boundaries and you'll also become more aware of enforcing them and you'll get better and better at this with time, um, you know, as you kind of grow and learn. And it's, we're, we're really talking about a inner perception and an inner eye, if you will, um, an inner I am of who and what you are and then how you understand that people can come into your orbit, you know, if you will, people can come into your, your inner space which you own especially as you mature you'll realize that you more and more own this personal space and that you have the need and the requirement and the freedom to protect it and that this becomes then an eye control like you're at the helm you're at the cockpit you know you're dialing it in um, really on a moment by moment basis when you emerge and grow through that hyper aroused state, you're like coming down from way, you know, out of your usual zone, comfort zone, your usual operating zone of what you feel, look at, say, and think about, you know, how your future is planned. And also it really ties into the psychopath where they, they really aren't in it for the long run. They're really not in it for the long haul. They're in it just for a certain patch, a certain period of time, just like Picasso went through his blue movement, you know, it's just, it was just encapsulated for that moment of time. And then he's moved on. He's not thinking about the, his blue phase or, you know, that period of time. And he went into more his other, you know, cubic artistry, you know, um, uh, cubism. And, you know, he developed really that movement. But in other words, the relationship to a psychopath is just like, what do I need from you? or for my life right now, and then they're moving on. They're just sort of pull in from their environment, whatever it is that they need, and it keeps them on this sort of hyper-stimulated mode. You know, human beings love stimulation. And so a psychopath can really become this source of stimulation, meaning getting into this sort of zone with them, that enamored sort of unicorn fantasy-like fluffy cloud sort of feeling that you're when you're engrossed in them and you've kind of you've met this sort of you know feeling of um being you know being seduced or you know being getting that that magnetic pull with this individual but once again it's laid out with trust and so that's why people will because of this need for being stimulated it's an automatic process to sort of get addicted 
to that hyper aroused state because it doesn't exist anywhere else. And it will keep people very narrow minded, even though they think that they're enlarging and growing to a psychopath. It's not, there is, it's not like personal growth and it's a, we, and we're planning out our future and we're dreaming together. You know, a lot of people who are in the love bombing, you know, thought that you were in the dreaming phase and that I want the best for you and you want the best for me. And then there's an us and you know, the, the two of us are greater than the sum of the parts. There's this sort of, you know, oceanic feeling where you feel like you, your life is at that higher level. And then, you know, you open up door three and then you find out something else about, you know, about them. And then you're in that hyper aroused state. You're sort of left high and dry. So, you know, coming down, I think it's very important to recognize that you have um, an area within your person, you know, that is, um, is bigger than this, the moment that is bigger than the problem. There's a part of you that is much greater than the limits and the confines in the cloistering off just sort of, you know, within that, that isolation that exists and is operating at all times. Um, and it knows better and it can help and guide you to better, but it's kind of like you, ha it's a, it's a tapping in thing. It's where it's like, you really kind of settle the energy within and say, I've, I've got this. Okay. And you know, just, it has to be a feeling first before it's even verbalized. And it has to be kind of like a self induced feeling of safety. Just, it's like a switch that you find while you're walking in the dark and you feel it like braille and you find your way, you know, even though it feels dark, the dark night of the soul. I mean, there's been all sorts of poems written about this music, rock and roll, the blues, bebop, whatever. Um, so, but it is something that you will, you will, um, you will, because of being trespassed, you know, you will, you will emerge out of that, that trespass zone where you've been violated. So you'll be able to leave that groundwork or that part of the journey behind and you'll be, you can come on new ground. You can come on a new perspective, but it's a physiological sort of tapping in. Um, it's not, um, it's, it's say, I need to feel, you know, I need to feel safe. I want to feel safe. I want to be restored. You know, giving these sort of affirmations to oneself will bring, really bring it in. And it's also realizing that, you know, the, the viewpoint with this female psychopath became a narrow mindedness for you. It becomes like an addiction that people are literally powerless over until they can pull themselves off. Like, you know, a suction cup from an octopus, just yanking it off that it can no longer have that trauma bond, that sort of magnetic, like suction, like adherence that they sort of draw. It's different from your, you know, your average Sally, your average Joe, it's a different feeling and you have to trust and know. So your trust had been taken in the beginning. So you need to then pull trust back to yourself and honor that and trust that even though I know that this person is, I need to stay away from. I usually want to be carefree. I want to have a big heart. I want to be generous. I want to be trusting. You go, okay, I know that I can reel it in and dial it in as you go through new experiences moving forward. It's knowing that you come to that, you know, I'm settling within. I am settling within. I can I can do this. I'm settling within. You're you're giving commands to yourself. You know, it's a self, it's a it's a me and me right here moment, you know. It's it's one of those sublime moment moments where you really tap in and you sort of get that little fire going in that belly burner or that, that, um, you know, Bunsen burner, whatever it is that's in there, it's getting a little flick on it's, you know, steel, slit, you know, uh, flint and steel. There's something, you know, that just a little spark that goes off. Literally it's creating new neural synapses that have been, you know, not able to be elicited or created in the minds and brains of those individuals because of the addiction. It takes all of the, you know, mental and psychic energy away from that bigger picture, which is in knowing that there's some, uh, something stronger that has sort of that, you know, um, that, uh, critical thinking 
um, faculty that you can use that is a new part of you that maybe feels mature or you know something else is kicking on in here um, it will it can it will and does feel like that and it will as people say the relationship with this individual was a, a life changer well it absolutely is because it's like after being feeling damaged or not cared for for the long run I think that you know just looping back to what I was saying is that you know when you um, have kind of emerged from that and you're realizing that if some if you care about something you will take good care of it you know if you want to eat from that fork that you like you're not going to put it in the garbage disposal and get it all scuffed up and then put it back in the drawer you're going to take care of it you know it's the same way with relationships you know if you want it to be there for the long run you have to take care of it and so if you are mistreated in a relationship then it's my feeling that you are not it is not for the long run it is for that short period of time it's like Picasso's blue moments or blue period I think that's what it's called you know when you talk about artists and they're going through their different periods or their development um, that you know it was just a, it was an emergence from them is we talk about education educare to pull out so you become more self-educated um, which is really one of the best skills that you can have and it's a skill this is a skill tapping to this place in within is a new it's like a new go-to place within you that you kind of you know you are able to manage moments even though there's hard to ask questions hard to deal with people where hitherto you might have you know your voice might be shaking you might be nervous you might have that avoidant tendency you know here they come and then there you go with a u-turn and you're just like um you know no not that you know you're you're opening up a, a can of whoop ass within you're like I'm getting this going I can handle this I am managing this I am taking my myself here and you've got a new crystal crystallizing and then continually re refined and recrystallizing vision of who and what and how you want your life to be for the long for the short the medium and the long you know um, the problem with the psychopathic relationship once again is because of the inactivity and the slowed movement in the prefrontal cortex that has to do with judgment morality and also planning learning you know learning from the past and then building on it and then being able to plan for the future that's all within the prefrontal cortex of you know the the, the most evolution you know most evolved aspect the most evolutionary aspect of a human being is that prefrontal cortex and so that is in the it is brain scans and all sorts of studies have shown that in psychopathic individuals there is reduced activity it is it is not working as as the rest of you know the big percentage of society so they're in the tiny you know one percenters of 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 society that are are operating with this sort of different outlook that makes them just sort of not really plan for the future and it gives them just sort of this really strange sort of transitory nature I mean they just kind of move in and out of relationships that you think are deep but they're really superficial to them but really in a sense that probably you and I most people who have you know empathy you know um, sensitivity um, s sympathy and empathy for others compassion a heart a sensitivity or awareness for good brotherhood sisterhood you know that aspect it ain't it ain't playing in that other house it ain't playing over there where that individual was the that music isn't there the feeling the vibe the sentiment the you know it's not cooking in there they just they mimic and they um, act as if you know they act as in other words it's just they do what business is normal for them this is just how it is for them so um, but the problem you know once again is restoring yourself to that feeling um, and getting to even a, a, an improved sense of homeostasis where you can regulate it you can dial it in you can know when to reel it back you can know when it's time to step it up when it's time to you know go on the recovery date you've been slacking acknowledging when you've been slacking um, being honest with yourself you know recognizing how do you keep yourself on track what are you doing 
Are you keeping your appointment book? Are you doing your recovery gift? Are you writing lessons learned? Are you keeping yourself, you know, in check and accountable? You know, and are you growing within because it's going to start to feel enlarged and, you know, enormous within. It's going to feel spacious within. It's going to feel that, you know, you've lo you've lost resistance but that you can hold the bigger picture in your hands. You can be in that embrace once again of that sort of you know, owning, having a more clear sense of owning that personal space that you bring within you. I call it your internal real estate. You know, you don't subject it to vandals who just want to have a cheap thrill and allow it to just be splattered on. And then the next day you're wondering what happened. This place is, you know, basically dilapidated, you know, which is they will dilapidate the lives of others if you stay with them long enough. And they know that this is the outcome. They will admit, they will, you know, they just, they will tell you, um, you know, I have just, they will tell you, um, I'm not going into too much of the story of, of what I have, but they have told me, they tell me, you know, in, in person, you know, do you want to learn more? This is how it is through the email as well. You know, this is what it's like for me. And so it's like confessions. So this is, you know, these, this is not, you know, um, this is not like a, a controlled study where you've got a control group, you know, like they do in, in their formal psychological studies. Um, but what I'm stating is these individuals will across the board unequivocally share with you. And it's written in books. Um, you know, Thomas Sheridan, um, The Labyrinth. Uh, he's got a wonderful book. Look him up, Thomas Sheridan, um, Labyrinth of the Mind. Uh, he's He's got a great book. I can't quite bring the title up right now, but... Um, puzzling people. Yeah. Um, I think that's called, uh, puzzling people. So sorry about that. But anyway, um, so the, the coming down also has to be done with no contact. You have to go no contact from a relationship with a, a female psychopath. I mean, even if you're just completely, you're swooning, um, you can't stop thinking about it. You have these intrusive thoughts. They're popping up in the, your dreams. You know, you feel like slightly terrified all the time. You know, you don't know if you can make it, but yet, you know, you're running on something. You're running on ether. You're running on vapor, but you're running on something. <clears throat> but, you know, and once again, this goes both ways, but it's looking and owning your ground, you know, realizing that you are here and you have rights and you have awareness and you're finer tuned, you know, that it's a, it's like a tuning fork within that you have paid attention to and listened and then honed in and like, like a tuning fork so that you can hear it and see it, feel it a little bit right before it's going to happen. The subconscious mind already knows what it's going to do. I think it's like five or six seconds before it does it. So, that, you know, just like body movement, you know, your subconscious mind knows what it's going to do, you know? So when you're, when you're closer to that awareness is where, where your truth lives, you know, when you're living and, um, communicating with people from that level, then you'll become more aware of when someone's violating your boundaries or they're trespassing or when someone is friendly, when they're, you know, talkative, when they're gregarious, when they're safe, when they're good people, you know, and you'll, you'll learn and then you'll be able to manage and enforce this, you know, like a, <clears throat> like a network, like a, a computer network, you know, around you, you'll just be able to kind of be able to sense and know and protect yourself. And then furthermore, the more you tap in and draw within and then get to that calm, just working on feeling calm. And then that is um, enough, you know, not, you know, who do I be now? What do I say? None of that um, has to come into play. It's a matter of really registering and feeling of that strong sense of inner safety and inner knowingness, which is then a seat of wisdom and a seat of power once you really live there and then you get interactive um, with it. In other words, because your higher power is is there, you know, a, a, a better, stronger voice, um, one that will say, hey, we're getting, we're out of here. No way, you know, and then gives you the words to say, gives you the actions to take, helps your steps go in the right direction and, and make corrections, you know, it's being more on your feet. So <clears throat> the hyper arousal, once again, 
Once you emerge from it, you'll find it's not desirable. As enough time passes, you'll then realize that those toxic relationships are no longer attractive to you. Um, and also, furthermore, you'll then when you get really good, you'll no longer start attracting those troublemakers. You'll be able to see from a distance and you'll be able to separate and distinguish yourself, not with judgment, but with rootedness and ground, groundedness and sort of a reverence, uh, once again, for that internal real estate that you carry with you and you really become aware. It's that becoming more sensitive and then being able to resensitize and calm all your senses down through all, you know, you know, really indulging all your senses with soothing music, soothing um, food, soothing sights, you know, being able to, you know, take more active lighting or anything you need to do with fabrics that can help you feel better and, you know, get away of all the irritants, you know, even if it means unplugging and just, you know, stop with the emails and everything else so you can just feel safe. And even if it feels like you're doing nothing, you're actually teaching your body that you have the command here, that you know what's up. You're going to steer this vessel to in the right direction. You know, now, if it's taking a little bit of a shock, it can feel like a shock. It can feel like a post-traumatic stress. That will subside. That will be reduced. It will it'll start to dissipate. You, you won't forget, especially if you register your lessons learned, you'll really begin to have that self erudation sort of feeling. Of, and then knowing how to self, you know, not only self-knowledge, but then, you know, how to better educate yourself in the world and paying attention to things that really matter to you. And you're really following things then that really matter to you as a whole, you know, and that then, you know, that is an interchange for you. And then you'll then begin to grow in the right direction once you start tuning into that, that zone of being in feeling and you know and so then when you find yourself getting stuck you start asking the right questions so you go to the next place and you start making the new decisions that hitherto you're completely oblivious to it's your body peace and harmony with you here today i hope that these videos do help please share please subscribe and please donate for more great tools videos discussions and support peace out have a beautiful day Bring yourself in, reel it in, even if you're on your own, you can get the energy back and begin to have better control of it and be able to feel the grace and feel the nuances of your body, not as it's hyper aroused or distracted or seduced by someone who had manipulated you. That does not, you know, that should not be at all within your experience when you go no contact. You pull back within. You regain control, you regain ownership of that internal real, real estate, and you own it. It's a feeling, it's a reverence, it's a self-respect. You've got it.